Welcome back to TV5 News at 9. We have another edition of Education Matters, where we're, of course, joined by Dr. Craig Douglas. Good morning. Good morning. It's great to be here. We're so glad to have you, Dr. Douglas. So we're going to talk about New Year and the New Year's resolutions that come with it. And we always hear about people making their New Year's resolutions, Dr. Douglas, and then, you know, they don't stick. So how can our students turn their resolutions into smart goals for the New Year and keep with them? It's an opportunity, an opportunity for students to do some goal setting. Maybe this is something that's new to them or something they've done and can refine. But the idea of SMART goals, of course, we're always abbreviating things in education, right? So SMART uh, stands for strategic or specific and measurable and achievable mm -hmm. and relevant and time sensitive. So all these are important ingredients that go into any kind of goal setting ritual. So specific, I'm gonna give uh, uh, an example, an educational example that might be applicable, but certainly can be tweaked and can apply to any subject matter. But let's say it's reading. We always talk about reading, right? Because of its value and its importance. So let's say that over the course of the next year, 2024, gotta get used to saying that, 2024, uh, we set a goal, uh, depending on the age of the, of the youngster, of maybe reading one autobiography a month. Mm. Okay, so that'd be 12 over the year. It's very specific. I chose autobiographies because that, as a kid, I really liked to read about, uh, especially sports heroes. Uh, one of my favorites was Jackie Robinson. Yeah. That opened my eyes to what he went through as uh, the first African-American uh, major league player, et cetera, et cetera. So, it's specific. It's measurable. If it's one book a month, well, every month goes by. Have you read a book or not? Have you exceeded the goal? Have you fallen short? It's measurable. Right. It's achievable, mm -hmm. depending upon the age of the youngster and the thickness of the book. Yeah. Uh, one book a month seems to be uh, reasonable, and it could be a, a good goal to set forth. It could be tweaked. You know, if the if the child races through the first book uh, the first week, then you can you know adjust. Either look for a more challenging book, or maybe adjust the goal. Um, is it uh, is it relevant? Is it is it important to the child? Well, if you let the child do the picking, mm -hmm. you know they'll have some buy-in and they'll have a stake in it. And if for some reason they pick an autobiography that isn't really uh, fascinating to them, they can always readjust before the month's conclusion and maybe make another selection. I think. The, the last part, the idea is time may be the most important because I don't know about you, but sometimes I have set goals and maybe have not been real tight about the timeline. And gosh, pretty soon time has gotten away from me and maybe yeah. I haven't achieved anything or I've fallen short of my goal. Um, there's always opportunities to adjust that, but if it's time sensitive, then it seems to be something that can be more important and valued. Uh, I don't mean to sound too preachy here, but the idea of setting New Year's resolutions really is kind of cool. Uh, many times we set goals of uh, stopping and smoking. My dad did that when I was a kid. I thought yeah. that was really important. I remember that even to this day. Sometimes it's weight loss, whatever. It's exercising. If it's a general resolution for adults, why can't it be an applicable goal-setting experience for the youngster? Yeah. It applies to everybody. It does. Yeah. And why would you say the goal setting is such an important thing for students to learn? I think, it, you know, the perspective of the child is important. Um, I think sometimes time seems so far off for youngsters mm -hmm. that the idea of setting a goal over, I, I gave the example over the year, a year seems like a long time for a kid. Yeah. Well, if, if you chunk it up in terms of months or even weeks, then it becomes something that can be uh, a progress. You're moving towards something. Yeah. You're making it important and you're showing it's valuable. All those are great lessons for all of us, but especially for youngsters. Yeah, and I was always told to, to achieve smaller goals too so that you could hit those larger goals easier. I agree with you, and that's why I like sometimes short-term goals. They're checkoffs towards a bigger goal yeah. or a long-term goal. And you would say that's a good strategy to reorganize, say, if you went through the, your first goal too quickly or maybe you're struggling a little bit, that's a good 
second strategy? The more flexible we can be as humans, I think the more uh, satisfied we're going to be. And yeah. that's true for youngsters, too. Uh, I think sometimes youngsters, you know, I'll, I'll go back to basketball. I was a basketball coach. Yeah. You know, if they, if they miss their first couple shots, they're timid and don't want to take any more shots. Well, what do they say? Great shooters got to keep shooting. Right. And, and Michael Jordan will tell you he missed more game-ending shots than he made, but mm -hmm. we always remember the, what the ones he made. Of course, yeah. yeah. So tips, I guess, for teachers of, uh, and this is when students go back to school, but for parents to make sure their kids are hitting these goals, holding them accountable, what would you suggest? Encouragement. Yeah. Encouragement and, and a lot of patience because uh, goal progress is not linear. Mm -hmm. Many times you make progress and you may regress and you make progress and you may regress. So it's got to be a lot of patience and a lot of encouragement and flexibility. I agree. All right, Dr. Douglas, anything else you want us no, to know? I just wish everyone a great 2024. Yeah. Get used to saying it, 2024. And, you know, I just wish everybody all the best. Yeah. yeah. Not only saying it, but when you're writing it down, too, you got to remember that 2 4. Yeah, that's right. It's not 23 anymore, it's 24. <laughs> Dr. Douglas, appreciate you as always. Thank you. And if you want more information on today's topic, make sure you go to the 9 a.m. guest page that's on our website at WNEM.com.